OK, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's planning committee meeting. My name is Councillor Peter Richards and I will be chairing tonight's meeting. I'm going to run through a few housekeeping things if I may, first of all. Um, as you know from yesterday's vote in Parliament, we are now obliged to wear our masks inside. And please, if you can, uh, remain as socially distant as you possibly can within the chamber. Um, only when you are speaking will you be allowed to take off your mask. That applies to everyone sat around this table and also to our speakers. Uh, so please bear that in mind when you do sit down. So if you could sit at the middle desk uh, for our speakers, there is some hand sanitizing gel. Um, I think we've got some desks, wi desk wipes. If we haven't, we will put some there shortly in a bin to put them in. If, once you're done, if you give the desk a quick wipe and the uh, the microphone buttons as well, that would be really appreciated. Uh, we're not expecting a fire alarm tonight, so if the one does go off, follow us. Uh, we will be meeting over at the car park uh, over the road. Please do make sure you're over there so that we can make sure that everyone is safely out of the building. We do need to make sure you're all ticked off. Um, mobile phones, if you could please turn them off. Uh, at the very least, please turn them to silent. I don't mind if they're on and being used, provided that it doesn't affect uh, the running of this meeting. Um, we are, of course, as I'm sure you know, uh, being live streamed and recorded for future use on YouTube and our uh, website as well. We do have some officers that are joining us online and I will go through a list of those now. So introductions first of all. So to my immediate right, we have Anne Banks from Committee Services. Um, joining us online is our solicitor, Ross Chambers. And then our planners are Louise Casey, Heather Kenny, and joining us online uh, is Paul Thompson. And to my immediate left is Dale Barker, who is our planning manager. Dale, do you have a statement you need to make? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, my role tonight is to provide impartial advice and to as assist members in their decision taking. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dale. Um, OK, let's get into the meeting proper. Could I have our apologies for absence, please? Yes, Chairman. Got apologies from councillors Fleming, Crump, Eden, and Hensha Serafin. Yes, Mr Chairman. Um, Mr Chairman, uh, application um, seven on the agenda, that's a Walnut Tree Barn Camp Lane, Warmington. Um, I was actually at the um, parish council meeting where it was discussed, but um, I didn't make any comment on it. So I come here with a, an open mind. Thank you, Mr Chairman. OK, thank you very much, Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, item four of the agenda, beg your pardon, item five of the agenda, which is application 21 slash 02771. I'm supporting that application and will leave the committee at that point and speak on behalf. Lovely, thank you very much. Anyone else? Any other members for the disclosure? No, jolly good. OK, uh, minutes. Is everyone happy with the minutes from the 24th of November? A quick nod and yeah, all yeah, good. That's you. lots of thumbs up. So that's been agreed. Marmots, I'll sign those after tonight's meeting. Now we have um, a slight rejig of the uh, running order. Um, we have two items that have been triggered to committee due to parish council uh, either support or objection. Um, those parish councils either haven't registered to speak or now are unable to attend this evening. So the first item is 21017088 REM. That is application four on, or sorry, item four on the agenda. Uh, Fossway, uh, the old Fossway Treadington. Um, we would be looking to delegate that as we haven't, uh, we do not have parish council registered to speak. Could I please have a show of hands for those in favour of delegating? That is unanimous, so committee therefore delegates that item. And item eight, which is application reference 21020221 FUL 28 Farley Avenue in Harbury. Uh, we did have a parish council register to speak, but unfortunately they are no longer able to make it tonight. Um, we were informed quite late, so uh, we will be looking to delegate that as well. Could I please have a show of hands for those in favour of delegation for that item? Marvellous. Committee therefore resolves to delegate item eight. For the benefit of the applicants, I can do that, no problem. So on item four, um, it is to grant, that is the Fossway, Old Fossway in Treadington. And for item eight, uh, again, it is to grant uh, 28 Farley Avenue. Those, I those items, as I say, will be delegated. OK, let's move then to our first uh, official and uh, full application, which is item number five. Uh, application reference is 2102771FUL is Mirwood Farm in Solihull. Our presenting officer is Paul Thompson, who is online. Paul, whenever you are set up and ready to go, please do feel free to start. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on your screen just now should be the presentation. Uh, so we are here in Earlswood. Um, 
the application site is outlined in red here. It is a farm. Uh, the entirety of the site, apart from a small segment roughly here, if you can see my mouse pointer, uh, is within the draft built up area boundary for Earlswood. That, uh, since the NDP has yet to be adopted, that uh, built up area boundary has not been defined yet, um, but the case officer has concluded that because it has been um, previously developed at some point with paving slabs, it is to be treated as being within the physical confines of the village. Um, there are five buildings uh, currently on site, five barns. There is a paddock uh, and orchard to the rear here outlined in blue is also within the ownership of the applicant. Uh, Proposed here are three dwellings. Uh, this is to replace an earlier planning permission for two dwellings um, within the same site. And the floor plans are as follows. Uh, the main difference is there are now five bedrooms as opposed to the previously approved four. Uh, here are the elevations. And the case officer's recommendation is to grant planning permission, Chair. Paul, Paul, thank you thank very you. much indeed. OK, if we could call forward our first speaker, who is Councillor John Brougham from the Parish Council, from Tamworth and Arden Parish Council. Is our Parish Councillor here? I was uh, hang on. Uh, sorry, Councillor Dixon, if you could come forward and speak at one of the microphones, otherwise we won't be able to pick it up online. Chairman, I was advised by the parish office yesterday that uh, Mr Broughton was ill, but they had sent in a written report that we would have been speaking to. If it's not been received, then obviously you can't read it. Unfortunately, it hasn't been received, so we will not be able to uh, yeah. receive it. Uh, if you could please clean the microphone and uh, when you make your way back over, that'd be great. Um, I need to seek some advice. Just bear with me. Uh, members, in uh, in the circumstances, uh, given we have no uh, parish council and they are the reason that this has been triggered to committee, we're in a position where we can once again delegate. Um, excuse me, bear with me a second. I'll start that again. We are in a position where we can once again delegate due to the fact that the trigger, the parish council are not here and in attendance. So um, could I please have a show of hands for those in favour of granting um, through delegation for this item, please? That is unanimous. So uh, committee therefore resolves to delegate the granting of application 2102771 FUL Millwood Farm. This is running along very smoothly. <laughs> OK, so we'll move on to our next full item, uh, which is application 2100496 LBC. Uh, the Old Toft Bridge Street in Fenny Compton. Our presenting officer is Heather Kenny. Heather, whenever you're ready, over to you. Thank you, Chair. The application before members is for the installation of solar panels to the Grade 2 listed building, Old Toft. Heather, mind Oh, it's on. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'll start again. <laughs> the application for four members is for the installation of solar panels to the Grade 2 listed building Old Toft, located in Fenny Compton. The building is identified by the yellow dot. The red line encircles the property boundary. The building fronts directly onto the road with garden land to the rear. It forms a group with other nearby listed buildings, also highlighted red, and it lies within the Fenny Compton conservation area, which is the pink boundary line you can see here. The building is a linear range of late 17th century date with later extensions to the side and rear. Coarse iron stone construction with concrete tile roof. The image you can see now is the front of the building that's taken from the road. This image is taken from the rear garden, which shows the elevation to which the panels would be installed. And that's the second photo just to show the left side of that elevation that was obscured before. 
The solar panel array would be installed in two parts across the roof plane on this elevation. The panels would be placed both horizontally and vertically arranged around existing dormer and roof lights. The panels would sit on a frame over the roof tiles, which would be fixed to the roof structure underneath. And the images now shown are the real ele elevation as it is currently next to the proposed plan of the solar panel installation. The recommendation is that consent be refused for this application for the reasons set out in the officer report. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, we will move to our first speaker registered on this item, who is Mr Stephen Brearley, who is our applicant. Good evening and welcome. So, Mr. Brearley, you will have three minutes. I'll give you a 30 second warning before your time is up. If you uh, when you're settled and ready, if you press the button in the middle, it should turn red. And then as soon as you're comfortable, feel free to start. Members of the committee, our primary motivation for this application is to substantially reduce our household carbon footprint, saving over a thousand kilos of CO2 annually, almost half of our current household demand. The planning officer's report indicates that this is a modest contribution to the environmental challenge that we face. However, it is only through millions of modest actions that we can collectively meet the target of reducing UK emissions by a minimum of 78% by 2035. An optimised solar array in combination with other big ticket items that have already been adopted, insulation, secondary glazing, electric car, is critical for us to support limited global warming to below two degrees. Alternative options to mounting the array on the main roof have been evaluated and are suboptimal. Shading significantly reduces system performance on single storey extension mount by 70%, on ground mount by 55%. The size of a ground array is not suited to residential garden currently used by kids, greenhouse, vegetable patch, etc. Mounting an array on a single storey extension will be visible from uh, Bridge Street. The proposed mount on the rear facing main roof around the existing dormer window and Velux windows is optimal. It maximises system performance. It's only visible from the neighbouring Knott's Cottage, who are supportive of the application. It's fully removable with the exception of small holes in the drilled into the rafters. A full structural survey would be a condition of planning being granted. No objections have been received and it's actively supported by neighbours. The declaration of a climate emergency resulted in many councils revisiting their planning guidelines recognising the environmental benefit can outweigh the impact on the heritage of the building. Panels have been approved for installation on a Grade 1 listed church in Giggleswick and following Helston Towns Council's declaration of a climate emergency, they have approved panels for application on their Guild Hall, which is Grade 2 listed. We believe owning a listed building is about holding on to the building's features and history, whilst not holding it back from being future proof. Old Toft has had a number of major challenges during its lifetime including joining two cottages together. A government planning inspector overruled Birmingham City Council's refusal to grant permission for panels on a church in Moseley, stating in the context of a building whose special architectural and historic interest has been largely defined by a series of changes, it seems to me that the panels would merely represent another addition to that series. Change is not necessarily harmful. My family has the desire and funds to meet this challenge and do not feel that owning a listed building should preclude us from taking a large stride towards our net zero goal. 30 seconds. We believe that the environmental and ecological benefits of the proposal support both our personal and the council's commitment to swiftly respond to the climate emergency, and it significantly outweighs the limited visual and heritage impact on the rear of the building. Thank you. Beautifully timed. Thank you very much. If you remain seated while I seek if there are any questions from our members. Members, do we have any questions? Councillor Mills first, please. Thanks, Ms. Shem. Uh, good evening. Um, the the, the uh, extension on the side was that that's was that part of the original building extension you've got there in white. Um, good question. It was it was there at the point the two cottages were joined together. So this is way predating when we owned it. Uh, we we bought it about three. But that wasn't ago. obviously it wasn't original part of the building no. when when they were no. and the. You've got a conservatory at the back there. Yes, that's just had planning, plan, planning permission approved to be knocked down and replaced with an extension to the kitchen, which is the piece that juts out from the back. Right, OK, thank you very much. OK, Councillor Curtis, please. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reilly. Um, just a slight question about the, the roof lights and the door moat. Do you know if they were part of the original structure or when they were put in? Uh, they were put in at a point the um, the two cottages were knocked together. So that was um, roughly 1997, something like that. Yeah. So they're not part of the original anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. OK, any further questions, members? Last chance. No, Mr. Burley, thank you very much for your time and contribution this evening. If you, yeah, if you could fix your mask and if you wouldn't mind doing a quick wipe down when you have a moment, that would be great. Thank you very much. While you're doing that, I'll introduce our next speaker, who is Councillor Rock. Councillor Rock, if you want to make your way forward once Mr. Burley has left the seat, that would be great. Thank you and good evening and welcome Councillor Rock. You already know the drill, I'm sure. You'll have five minutes. I'll give you a 30 second warning. Once you're sat and settled, feel free to start. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, colleagues. Uh, firstly, can I say I've got no criticism of officers in their work to preserve our important stock of heritage buildings and I regard that as a valuable task. However, I think we should be looking at the balance in the present context of climate change. I think this is the first case like this that the council has um, come across since its climate change emergency on, uh, was passed on the 15th of July 2019 and the UK Parliament declared a climate emergency on the 1st of May 2019. First of all, I just want to make a comment on the references in the report. Uh, missing from the report is the existence of the emergency Fenny, emerging Fenny Compton Neighbourhood Development Plan, although I accept its limited weight. I note there are various references to national precedents, which seem to be much earlier cases. I don't intend to repeat everything the applicant has said, but note in the Mosley case, it does seem that the planning context as nationally is shifting. Oh, I see we've got the first slide. Climate change is not a theory in Fenny Compton. The village has been a victim of increasing flooding problems over the past several years. Indeed, the Emerging Neighbourhood Development Plan, which is about to go to Regulation 16 consultation, makes specific reference to this issue. 74% of residents felt the development should make more use of domestic solar power, and 71% of residents felt that minimising the risk of flooding was very important. Now, I'm not suggesting that saving one or one and a half tonnes of carbon dioxide in one development is going to stop flooding. But if we could all save 30 million tonnes of carbon dioxide by every home in the UK having solar panels, I think this would make a difference. Could I have the next slide, please? The pictures I showed you were taken from the vicinity of Bridge Street, where this property is located. Uh, and these two are from the uh, draft neighbourhood development plan. Uh, the chap standing up to his knees is standing at the end of Bridge Street. And I think this does add spice to preserve and enhance, which is the words in the NPPF and in CS8. So turning to the report, the report in page 32 in the fourth paragraph suggests that public benefits must be weighed against the level of harm. So that's a job for your committee now. In paragraph seven and eight on the same page, references made to the appearance of the result of this application. The views are entirely private and they can't see by officer. On the last paragraph of page 33, the alternative of the ground or outbuilding mounted system will not deliver the climate change benefits because of shading from a tree and it's therefore not worth doing. And we're not about to cut a tree down so we can do that. On page 34, uh, paragraph three, the report alludes to another case, which I believe is a solar farm with a significant level of public objection about the appearance of the public realm. So I want to be fair to officers, but I would question the validity of, of such a comparison uh, where we have a, a lot of public support, as you will see from your update sheets. I note that in January of this year, an appeal was allowed to a listed building in the conservation zone next door in Farnborough which included a substantial extension, but specifically included the incorporation of roof lights visible from the public domain. The inspector noted that the council deemed roof lights acceptable before going on to permit that additional substantial change to the fabric of the building. 
The minimal harm presented by this proposal is readily outweighed by the climate change benefits and should be considered in the round, not only because what has gone on at COP26 and in Parliament, but in the Council's own resolutions. There are clear public benefits. The visual effects are only private views. The installation is clearly reversible, un unlike, say, Velux windows, which seem, we seem happier to permit. And both Parliament and this Council have expressed a policy stance in resisting climate change. The structural assessment should be conditioned in the approval to address the reservations about that feature. I ask that you grant this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Rock. Members, do we have any questions for our councillor, please? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Councillor Rock. Um, just there, there are a couple of things in the in the report which um, seem to have question marks over them. Things like the sort of insulation of it being um, reversible and, and the impact to the structure and things like that. Do you have any experience from uh, that the might sort of lend, lend to your views? I know you sort of made some assertions there. I just want to make sure that there are, there's some basis to it. Sorry, Councillor Rock, is your mic on? Thank you, Chair. Just been, unfortunately, we missed all of that. Uh, well, I say we 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 heard it. Yes, but the public well, didn't. Do you want to re realise on me remembering what I said? So, shall I return to the holes then? Yeah, I mean, you can just pray see it if you wouldn't mind. So, I think that the the drilling the drilling of the holes is clearly something that needs to be done. I would argue that that's not substantial harm compared with other things that we permit on listed buildings. And in terms of the roof structure, I think that is something that can be met, as I say, by condition uh, to make sure a structural assessment is done. And that's a technical matter, but I think that could be conditioned. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Members, do we have any other questions for Councillor Rock? No, in that case, Councillor Rock, thank you very much for your time and contribution. I see you're already cleaning up after yourself. <laughs> Good man, thank you. OK, uh, members, we have no more speakers, so um, we will open up to uh, officers, uh, sorry, questions to officers or any points of clarification. We did have um, one from Councillor Mills about the extension um, uh, and timing of that. Could you give us an idea of when that was, please? Yes, if I just go back to this photograph, there's a break in the stonework here, so you can see that it is a later addition. I don't think it's late 20th century, it might be early 20th century or a 19th century addition, but it isn't part of the original 17th century structure and neither is the dormer or the roof lights. So, so it's not recent, recent? No. Okay. What you're saying is it's likely to have been before the listing was put in place, is that fair? Yes, the building was listed, I believe. I don't think I've got the date. Oh, in this, uh, 1967. So it is likely to have been in place then, but I couldn't say for definite without doing okay. a single investigation no on it. At all. Do we have any other points of clarification for our officers, members? No, in that case, we'll open up to debate. Who would like to kick us off? Oh, hang on. Do you have another one? Chairman. Okay, yeah. Councillor Mill. <laughs> um, the conservative at the back we can see there on that photograph that's 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 coming down isn't it right no, it's not part of this application but that's not as part of this application but it's been approved recently on another application um approved only uh, in october this year for um for it to be demolished and a new extension um abutting um the range here i don't know if you can see my cursor yeah um it, it will be in that corner there, the new extension, and that's been approved. Thank you. OK, in that case, if there are no more questions and points of clarification, we will move into a debate. Who would like to kick us off? Councillor Mills? 
Thanks, Mr Chairman. Yes, I, I was asking these questions because uh, we want to, ref well, we, there's the refusal was because of the um, solar panels on the roof and because it's listed, yeah, as simple as that. And yet we've got a, a fairly <laughs> relatively new conservatory on the back there that, that's not, you know, it, it's, it seems to be improved. Um, and I, 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 I can't, to be honest, I can't see uh, why we're refusing the roof um, panels at the same time approving that conservatory. I mean, they've both got the same. Um, yeah, okay, that's what I think anyway. Thank you. It's worth noting that obviously that application is a separate application. I, we have to consider I, on their own merits. I, I, I do realise that. We don't have the benefit of no. the view of what has been I, I approved. I do understand. Thank you. So we have to consider it on its own merits. Um, Councillor Dixon, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'm looking at page 32. Um, centre of the page, NPPF recognises the significance of heritage assets, describing them as an irreplaceable resource, which should be conserved in a manner appropriate to their significance. I'm looking at this property and I'm not sure if there's any significance to it. I appreciate it's grade two listed, but as Councillor Mills and we can all see, it's been knocked about and had various extensions and additions and amendments over time. And then it goes on in that same paragraph. This sentiment is mirrored in CS8 of the core strategy that assets should be protected and enhanced. I would actually argue that uh, solar panels will enhance that property. Might not enhance it visually, but it will enhance it by way of generation of electricity. So to my mind, um, I am supportive of the panels being permitted. Is that a proposal? I would propose that we grant. Yes, Chairman. OK, and we need to be so clear on your reasons for, uh, for going against officer's recommendation. I'll come back to you on that. Uh, Councillor Adams, signal first. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to second that for one um, and uh, for, for the reasons that, that Councillor Dixon put forward. Um, I think it is in the balance. I, I, like Councillor Rock said, he, he's sort of not disagreeing with protecting heritage assets. And I think the work that's gone into this is is um it's useful but yeah we have to have a forward momentum when considering this type of application um and particularly the the this case in particular with with the existing changes that have been made to it uh, you know the dormer and, and things like that i think we can consider the um the public benefit to increase the sort of renewable generation of energy um, it does outweigh the harm to this particular one. Uh, so I'm very happy to second and support. Thanks. OK, thank you very much. Councillor Curtis. Nothing further to add. OK, Councillor Jennings. As I've spoken about it before, I'm very much in favour of solar panels. Um, and I know that if you are going to make any changes to uh, listed buildings, it has to be sensitive. Um, I think if, it, if this has been on the front of the building or visible, and whilst I appreciate that um, whether it's visible or not, it doesn't affect the damage or harm it does to a listed building. However, it has to be done sensitively and by not having any on the front, um, that to me does go along the sensitive line. I say I'm very much in favour of solar, solar panels. That's, that's where, where I'm moving towards. OK, thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak at this point? No, OK, so we have a proposer and a seconder. Um, Dale, you've heard the reasons that have been put forward. Are you comfortable that those reasons have been clearly articulated? And would you mind repeating them so that we all understand your interpretation of them as well? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think what I'm hearing from members is that they've understood the essence of the report. They've understood that it's uh, important to balance the impact on the significance of the listed building against the public benefits of the renewable energy. And I think I'm hearing that they're giving great weight to the amount of renewable energy that this proposal will generate and that they feel that that great weight, that great public benefit will outweigh the harm to the listed building. Um, it's not for me to comment on that. That's what I'm hearing from members. Uh, and that is within their uh, remit 
to to reach that conclusion. So I, I, that's the reason I'm here in German. I think I would also um, add to that and correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Dixon also referred to the uh, extent of um, extensions that have been made and have been approved. Um, I think higgledy piggledy is a word I read in here somewhere. I might or maybe I'm just uh, that's in my head. But the uh, the style and the layout of that and the back of the house actually uh, is already in that manner. So uh, that has also been considered. And I, would, I think we need to add that in. Help that me with that, that chair, uh, because there have been alterations to the dwelling which have caused it harm in the past. Um, how does that lead on to, I, to I think, further work? I'm not clear what what justification that gives you. I think it's the the point is that the consideration has been given to the fact that that has happened. It's not in itself a reason to overcome, but it is an a, a sort of an additional thought. Okay, thank you. Chair. That is what I heard. Am I am I right in saying that? I would basically say that the those additional extensions in the past have reduced the significance of that listed building. Okay, and um, Chairman, we'll do some reasons for your agreement. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, condition. Okay. The conditions. Oh, 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 yeah. So we're happy. So the, the usual, the, the usual um, conditions, yeah. and then we can agree any additionals. Yes, it's, it's unlikely to be anything remarkable. It'll be start date and um, in accordance with the plans and structural survey. Yeah. Someone mentioned yes. structural survey. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Structural assessment. Yeah. Okay. So as proposed, Councillor Dixon, you're happy to move forward. Happy, Councillor Adam. Okay. In that case, um, the proposal uh, that has been seconded is to grant application 2101699 FUL for the reasons given. Could I have a show of hands for all those in favour, please? That is unanimous. unanimous. Um, so, therefore, committee resolves to grant application 2101699 FUL um, one at Tree Barn in Warmington. Okay. We will now move on to. I've just put the wrong. I do apologise. I've read the wrong thing. We haven't resolved to grant Walnut Tree Barn. We have resolved to grant application 2100496 LBC LBC Old Toft Bridge Street in Fenny Compton. I apologise, I read the wrong piece of paper. We will now, however, hear Walnut Tree Barn, which is application 2101699 FUL. Our presenting officer is uh, Paul Thompson, um, who will join us now. So Paul, whenever you're ready, do feel free to start. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Hello again. The presentation should be on screen now. Uh, this is the outskirts of Warmington. We are in the Cotswolds area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, the site is the black dot there. A little bit closer in. And we can see it outlined in red there. Uh, green dotted lines are footpaths and the settlement of Warmington and its accompanying conservation area within the purple boundary over to the top right. Uh, the walnut tree barn itself, as you can see just there, is a grade two listed building. It is one of five listed field barns across the district and is uh, unique amongst those five for its uh, particular features, which are very specific to the local area. Um, this is the site plan as proposed. It's a new dwelling uh, which would face the listed barn, which is off to the right there. Um, it would face the gable end of that and the rear elevation of the uh, detached garage. A new access is proposed. I say new, it's uh, reopened in, in, in theory, but the uh, as you'll see in a photo shortly, the uh, it's not really visible at present. It's uh, It's been dormant for a while. Uh, this is the dwelling that's proposed. This is the listed barn. This is the listed barn from about where the uh, gable end of the new dwelling closest to the road would be uh, across the uh, gardens in between. Uh, this is a view towards the proposed access, which uh, rather proves my point, I think. Um, and this finally is the view towards the, the rest of where the, the new dwelling would be. Um, the, the proposal is uh, contrary to our um, policy on self-build dwellings and local needs dwellings in that it doesn't immediately adjoin the village. Um, furthermore, the conservation officer has objected um, and hence on those grounds I recommend 
that we refuse planning permission chair paul thank you very much um i will call forward our first speaker on this item who is councillor mark burstall chairman of warmington parish council good evening and welcome thank you for your patience I think you've probably got an idea of the drill, so you will have three minutes. I will give you a 30 second warning. As soon as you're ready, set and comfortable, if you press the button in the middle, it will turn red and feel free to start. So why is the planning officer recommending refusal? Partway down page 42 of your briefing notes, he says in respect to policy AS10, while the proposed dwelling does appear to meet an identified local need, it would be sited neither within nor adjacent to a village. This is simply wrong. It is less than half a mile walk from the church, almost exactly the same distance as the properties along Village Road. It's within very easy walking distance of the centre of the village. Even Bill Budd, with his severe disability, can and often does walk into the village hall, the pub or to visit friends. The planning officer is wrong in this assertion and he's also wrong when he refers to the proposed building as being of unsustainable type and location. Sustainability is at the heart of the design of the building and there's nothing wrong with its location. Warmington and Alscott has a par published parish plan supported by a housing needs survey which has been formally adopted by Stratford District Council. Bill's condition falls precisely into the need identified in the survey and this is confirmed by the letter of support from WRCC, which is in your files. Again, the bungalow that Bill wants to build is precisely the type of development that was endorsed by the parish plan. He has gone to great lengths to design the bungalow to reflect the style of old local animal barns and to be as energy efficient as possible. Bill grew up in Warmington. He moved away to pursue a successful career in the Merchant Navy only to be forced out of that by a terrible disease, myeloma, myeloma, I beg your pardon. There's no cure and it's gradually crippling him. His father gifted him part of the garden in his will expressly so that he could build for himself his own self-contained and specially adapted bungalow to enable him to live a full and independent life within the community he loves and be within reach of support from his family and his friends. That piece of garden not open farmland has now been separated legally from Walnut Tree Barn and is registered in Bill's name with the land registry. Bill submitted full details of his medical condition to the planning officer who rejected these of being of no relevance to the planning application. I would argue that on the contrary, they are of very great relevance because they clearly demonstrate need. I submit that this need should be the overriding consideration. 30 seconds. Thank you. This application has the full support of the Parish Council and as can be seen by the unprecedented numbers of letters of support and the strong turnout here from friends and neighbours, there is very strong local support. This is exactly what policy AS10 requires and I urge you to grant the application. To the best of my knowledge, there's currently no property anywhere in our parish which is specially adapted for dis disabled needs. Allowing this application will mean that in future, this specially adapted bungalow will be there for others after Bill can no longer make use of it. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Members, do we have any questions for our councillor, please? No? OK, in that case, councillor, thank you very much for your time this evening. While you are very kindly cleaning the microphone and the table for us, I will call forward our next speaker is Mr Andy Wilkins, our agent, um, and Mr Bud, the applicant. Um, now, uh, if you would like to take a seat either side of the one in the middle, please. Um, that way we can have I social distancing. I'm having difficulty. That's right. You take package. as much time as you need. Don't you worry. <laughs> Is there a hole in the top? Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I will now do the housekeeping. <laughs> If you could fix your mask again before you make your way back, that would be great. Thank you. OK, so I believe, uh, Mr Wilkins, you will be doing the speaking um, and Mr Budge, you're here to answer questions. Is that correct? 
Okay, in that case, Mr. Wilkins, um, you'll have three minutes, 30 second warning. You know the drill. Whenever you're ready, feel free to start. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Andy Wilkins. I speak on behalf of Bill Budd, who is on my left and here to answer any questions that you may have regarding his need for the dwelling. I trust that you safely received my email earlier this week, which sets out the important and relevant information over and above that contained within the committee report. This is an application where you have the full support of the ward member, the parish council and the local community. This is not an application that anybody wants to make, nor is this an application that is simple to determine, but this is an application of such importance that is essential that you have the you have provided, you are provided with the background to Mr. Budd's condition. Living in purpose-built DDA accommodation close to his carer, family and myeloma clinic is an absolute necessity. Purpose-built accommodation reduces the pressure on doctor surgeries and the NHS precisely because it is purpose-built. Planning law makes it clear that personal hardship can be a material consideration in exceptional cases. This is such an exceptional and unique case. <clears throat> Mr. Budd has gone to great lengths to ensure that the proposal is as sensitively designed and highly sustainable as possible. It will not detract attention away from the main listed barn conversion itself. It has been designed to appear as an old cart shed, which will sit ancillary to the main barn. The impact on the setting of the listed building will be neutral. The proposal utilises local materials and is for an energy efficient, low carbon home with high green credentials, including solar panels and ground and air source heat pumps, well in excess of the building regulations. It will be zero carbon ready for when the grid is decarbonised. The application addresses four square a local need as established by the Warwickshire Rural Housing Parish Need Survey. The whole purpose of the Housing Need Survey is to identify and then address a need such as this. Otherwise, why bother with the surveys? Your policy on local needs housing sets four important requirements. One, have the support of the local community, tick. Two, respond to an identified need, tick. Three, be available to people with a local connection to the parish, tick. Four, be small scale, tick. All of these are clearly met. The only harm is due to the location of the site, which is not immediately adjacent to the village. 30 seconds. We accept that the building proposal will be around for a long time. However, the harm by virtue of location is modest, given the environmental credentials of the building and provision of features such as EV charging. Against this, there are compelling personal circumstances that will allow Bill Budd to remain in the community in which he has lived since a six month old child, close to his family and carer and in purpose built accommodation. We submit that this is an exceptional case with wholehearted community support. These personal factors outweigh the modest harm to policy. Please approve this application. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Wilkins. Members, do we have any questions either for Mr. Wilkins or for our applicant? Mr. Uh, Councillor Dixon, please. Mr. Wilkins, apart from indicating it exceptional, I think you also used the word unique case. Um, could you possibly expand upon that? Um, <clears throat> planning law makes it clear that personal hardship can be considered as a material consideration um, and uh, in exceptional cases. We see this as being an exceptional case. But not unique. No, I suppose not unique, but exceptional. Okay, I'll accept that. Yeah. Any other questions, members, for either our applicant or for the agent? No? OK, gentlemen, in that case, thank you very much for your time this evening. I can see you're already cleaning up for your fancy yourself, so thank you very much. If you could press the button again, just to turn the microphone off, please, Mr. Wilkins, thank you very much. Marvellous. OK, um, uh, now our next speaker is Councillor Fielding. Councillor Fielding, if you want to make your way to the centre table for me, please. Now, once you've plugged yourself in, you're on full charge. OK. OK, so you will have five minutes. I will give you a 30 second warning. Uh, you've asked for the planning officer to put a Google map up because I'm going to read through the number of different aspects okay. of the village. OK, uh, just bear with me a second. Paul, Paul uh, hopefully you can still hear us. Um, would you mind bringing up the Google map that Councillor Fielding is referring to, please? Certainly bear with me. Thank you very much. 
No problem. I hope my time hasn't started. It's almost done, Councillor Fielding. <laughs> right. OK, so Councillor Fielding, whenever you're ready to start, do feel free. Thank you. Warmington Parish comprises the villages of Arlscott, if you can show where Arlscott is in relation to Warmington. Um, Warmington. The parish is not considered an LSV, but it comprises a church, pub, two shops, carpenters, butchers and the National Herb Centre. His main carrier runs Piled, which a hardware and garden repair business, which is only 400 yards away. It is therefore difficult were it to be set as a built up area boundary because of the width of the uh, the, the parish. Councillor Fielding, I'm just going to, I've stopped your time, so don't panic. Do you want to take your mask off? Um, at the moment, it's muffling you a little bit more than uh, we would like, so sorry. So long as it doesn't pull any hearing aids off. There we go. My, apo my apologies. No problem. Your time has been stopped, so as soon as you start again, I will start again. This proposal meets two major features that are fundamental to this application. The first is the housing needs survey, which if our uh, uh, Paul Thompson could put up. One of the items identified was bungalows, which the scheme provides. As part of the parish plan, a housing needs survey was uh, conducted by WRCC uh, in 2016. This is up on the screen when it gets to it, and as if you can read it. Um, but it does refer to three one bedroom bungalows and one four bedroom bungalows. None have been built. The second is allowing the elderly and infirm to live within their own environment, as recommended by the NHS and SDC. Thus, by granting this approval, it would help to meet the needs of a popular member of the community. He has 29 letters of support and four no objections. The family home Walnut Tree Barn is on several levels. This makes it very difficult for a person with limited mobility to get around. The Cotswold Conservation Board have not objected. The only consultee that has objected is the conservation officer. Both the parish council and I support this proposal. The planning officer's comments with regards to public transport for local needs are correct. The applicant is a popular member of the community and can rely on neighbours to take him to and from the hospital. The nearest neighbour is 400 yards away from his property and for the last three years this neighbour has been supportive and helped uh, to uh, um, the application following the, father, the death of his father. The applicant is happy to sign a 106 agreement, which in time will provide additional accommodation for farm workers or members of the community, or as you have been told, for others who have this an infirmity. The bungalow is designed to meet Stratford's environmental requirements and sustainability for somebody with this gentleman's ailments. The planning officer has listed core strategy policies and he feels that he feels are relevant. CS1, this is uh, an application should meet the positive, be met, meet with a positive approach. And you can see all of these on page 47. CS9, high, high quality initiative will be encouraged where it reflects the, and complements the immediate local surround environment and maximizes sustainability. This property also meets CS 15 F development. It's restricted to a small scale community led scheme, which must meet an identified requirement by the community. Again, section G supports this proposal. Also the requirements of CS 15 refer to the uh, residential development under sections four and five. CS 11, the AONB, the AONB are happy for developments, providing they do not affect the environment that they are built in. I do not agree with the officer's comments to refuse this application. Both the parish, WRCC, with, um, with it, thus I would ask you to grant it. One of the things you can see in that letter from WRCC is the fact that it doesn't, the building does not need to be within the 
a built up area boundary or the parish. And also she refers to the Sarah Brooke Taylor, a self build development of this nature, which is part of the planning um, policy that is section whatever it was. Uh, but uh, that is where I rest my case. I believe this should be granted and I ask you to grant it. Thank you very much, Councillor. Members, do we have any questions for our ward member, please? No. OK, in that case, Councillor Fielding, if you could do your little housekeeping and make your way back to your seat, I'd be much appreciated. Right, in that case, we have no more speakers. So we'll move to points of clarification for our officers. Councillor Dixon first, please. Thank you, Chairman. Paul, um, on the uh, page 41, the Conservation Officer, objection less than substantial harm to the setting of the listed barn due to sighting scale and design features. Do we have more detail as to the thoughts of the Conservation Officer, please? Um, because obviously that is very succinct, but further on page 45, right at the very foot of that, um, the design and access statement submitted with the application refers that great care and attention has been taken to ensure that the proposed new dwelling will not be imposing or detracting from the main listed barn, but I am afraid that that design fails dramatically in this regard. Well, obviously there's a definite difference of opinion between the conservation officer, planning officer and the applicant. Um, do we have something from the conservation officer other than that one short sentence, please, Paul? Uh, Councillor, his comments are available in full online. I can read them out if that would help. If you wouldn't mind, please, Paul. Certainly. Uh, it goes into a considerable amount of detail on the history of the uh, of the building. The uh, element regarding uh, the proposal itself is shorter. Uh, it begins historic background, historic farmsteads and their buildings make a major contribution to the richly varied character of the countryside and illustrate the long history of farming and settlement in the English landscape. Field barns and out farms are set within the fields away from the main farmstead. They saved on this is still history. I think we can probably skip over that. Um, the barn affected by the proposed new dwelling is located close to Camp Lane and the village of Warmington. It has a sense of isolation being sited within a field network. The OS plan of 1885 shows that the setting was open with the barn sat adjacent to a track and field boundary being and being and within a large field. Typically, it is built of local stone with three bays with a central full height wagon bay and a steep roof of slate. The attached cow house is small and subservient in scale to the barn. The isolation form type and style reinforces the building's rural, historic and agricultural identity and maintains it as a landmark building within the countryside. The proposed dwelling would be seen close to the barn within its grounds. The building is single storey but has a relatively large footprint with a drive and parking area in the foreground. The style alludes more to an urban architect architectural approach and contrasts widely from the context. Overall, the composition would severely compromise the impact of the barn in the landscape and would detract and compete with detract from and compete with it. Consequently, it is considered that the proposal would be a detrimental to the barn's context, rare distinctive identity and dominance in a rural scene. It would not preserve the barn setting and less than substantial harm would be caused. Comments end there. Chairman, I'm, I might be able to cast a, a little more light onto that if it's helpful. If Paul could show us uh, the slides of the, the elevations of the proposed dwelling and the photographs of the barn. So if members would just take in from that the characteristics of the barn, uh, the proportions of the roof to the walls, the uh, overhang of the roof of the walls um, and, and the overall size, and then look at the next picture, which is of the barn. I hope I don't have to spell out the differences, but I'll point you to some of the more obvious ones. Um, the the roof is a much larger proportion of the uh, elevation of the barn than it is of the um, proposed dwelling because the roof is a much steeper pitch. So the proportions of the barn appear narrower and taller. Uh, it has a very, very different 
character. So if members were persuaded that in principle this dwelling was acceptable, nonetheless in detail the character of the proposed dwelling which has large overhanging eaves, as you can see there, there are no overhanging eaves. Yeah, it has none of the characteristics of the barn except a passing similarity of masonry. Uh, and I, I think that's what lies at the root of the, the comments you've heard from the conservation officer, as well as all the, the other points that he made. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dale. Um, members, do we have any more questions? Councillor Curtis, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, Paul, you had a photo of showing the uh, barn from the proposed site of this new build. Thank you. Um, can you that looks, I don't know, is it 200 metres away? Can you give us a, a distance from the new, from the barn to the new build? Uh, it's it's certainly less than uh, 200 metres. I can give you a, a precise distance if you prefer to bear with me momentarily. Well, just roughly, I mean. Uh, uh, I would say more on the order of about 50 metres. Right, OK. And there are no windows in the barn that are sort of overlooking the new site, are there? That's correct, Councillor. No, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Mills. Yeah, thanks, Mr Chairman. Uh, Paul, the, the materials to be used uh, are the same materials for the, the barn, yes? Local we, stonework is proposed. It will be local we, stone. We, yeah, and, we could try that with a condition, of course. And I can see that the barn has uh, in the past been altered and I, I, I take it because it got um yeah so that, well, the, that the, sorry sorry to jump in the, the structure if, if you're referring to this structure at, at this end yeah uh, where i'm indicating that's that's a cow shed that's wouldn't it wouldn't be contemporaneous with the original barn but it certainly has a fair vintage uh, and the um i can see some french windows there that's uh I've recently added. Um, it's probably not an original feature, Councillor. No, no, no <laughs> thanks. That's what I was getting at. Thank you. OK, anyone else with any further questions at this point? Um, if not, I'll dive in with one. Uh, Paul, we heard from, um, I think, both the Parish Council and the agent um, that in certain circumstances, exceptional medical um, circumstances can be considered to overcome certain levels of harm. I'm not familiar with that. Are you familiar with that? Could you enlighten us further if you are and tell us what consideration you've given to it, if indeed you are or have? Uh, well, the, the planning practice guidance um, typically says that, that private um, private considerations don't normally outweigh the public um, benefits and harms, which are what we're here to, to determine really as planning officers. Um, that, of course, conversely indicates that there are some circumstances in exceptional circumstances in which they could. So I, I, whilst it doesn't, whilst I'm not aware of any provision that specifically states that by um, by considering what's actually written there, the, the, it leaves space for there to be occasional exceptional circumstances in which um, personal circumstances are, are, are acceptable. And if Dale wants to come in on that. Um, to be honest, Chair, I think that's a full answer. Well done, Paul. Um, and something else that's rattling in my mind, I'm not sure if this is possible or not. Um, are there circumstances or do you think it would be reasonable uh, or possible for us to condition a tie to um, the applicant as the sole occupier and on uh, him ceasing to occupy uh, for the building to be removed and the area reinstated? Um, this is one that Ross might want to chime in on, but um, personal personal conditions are deprecated by um, the planning practice guidance. Um, it, they, because it's a self-build and or local need dwelling, depending on exactly which way we want to cut it, it would have to be subject to a, a legal agreement, a section 106 agreement in any case um, to to for him to be the um, occupant for at least three years and or for it to be permanently available or 
in, in the first instance at least for um, people with a local connection. So that would if, achieve the same if result with um, rather less uh, controversy in, in planning terms, can put it that way. OK, thank you. Ross, are you, uh, if you're able to comment on that as well, please, as our solicitor, that'd be great. Yeah, I think um, I, I don't think um, a condition tying the dwelling to a particular person and then requiring its demolition um, when that person is no longer there, I don't think that would be a reasonable condition, Chair. OK, simple answer to a simple question. Thank you very much. Um, members, do we have any other questions at this point for officers? In that case, let's open up to debate. Who would like to kick us off? Councillor Mills? Oh, th thanks, Mr Chairman. Yeah, um, I, I do know uh, this um, Walnut Tree Barn and only from, uh, from from the road. Um, the Paul says it's isolated, this um, Bungalow. I can't see how it's isolated. It's, it's not like it's in the middle of a field uh, and you won't see it from the roadway. That's, that, that's for certain. And I think these are exceptional circumstances. I really do. Uh, it, you, you've got support from the um, Parish Council. You've got support from, uh, I think, 29 letters of uh, support. Um, these are exceptional circumstances, Mr Chairman, and um, I, I would go for, for grant on this, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Is that a proposal? It, it is a proposal. Yes. I need, when, when we get to it, I need to be very clear on your reasons for going against the officer's recommendation and the, um, the policy. Councillor Foreman. Thank you. Um, I agree with Councillor Mills. I am prepared to second his proposal. Um, my father had this condition, so I do know that it is medical. Uh, that there are absolutely special circumstances here that for enable us to grant. And I think the applicant did say that he was prepared to sign a 106 application um, agreement anyway when they were making in their presentation. So yeah, I am prepared to second your proposal, Councillor Mills. OK, thank you very much, Councillor Foreman. Councillor Curtis. Um, thank you, I mean, just looking at policy AS10, um, if we're looking for a reason to enable us to approve this um, small scale scheme for housing employment to meet a need identified by a local community. Um, so I would have thought there is something there that would give us scope. OK, any other members wishing to speak at this point? OK, uh, Councillor Mills is the proposer to grant. Um, could you please outline very clearly your reasons for going against policy that has been set out in the recommendation? Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr Chairman. Uh, to be honest, purely on these exceptional circumstances um, where you have a gentleman here who is in need of this. Um, I, personally, I don't think it, it interferes with um, the barn that, that's already there. Uh, it is not isolated as the um, as the planning officer stated, because it's not right in the middle of a field. Um, yes, Mr Chairman, I, it's this, these exceptional circumstances, I, I would say. Thank you. I do, I do need planning reasons. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to sum up what you've just said. Ultimately, so looking at uh, reason for refusal number two, which specifically looks at the Grade Two listed barn and heritage. Uh, your view is that this doesn't cause harm to that and therefore overcomes reason number two. Reason number one uh, is uh, in relation to isolation um, uh, and it being outside the belt of area boundary. It, it's up to us as individual. It, it, that I'm speaking, Councillor Mills. It's up to us to decide whether we believe it to be outside a built up area boundary or whether it's isolated. Um, the picture you can see now, I believe that purple line is the built up area boundary. It could well be the conservation area, but it's my personal view is that this is not in the built up area boundary. But if you're content to put, put that uh, this is not an isolated dwelling, we can put that. I can't support that, so on that basis, I would be abstaining from your proposal. Um, and I think that is that those are the reasons ultimately. Is that right? 
Just bear with me while I read number three and remind myself. OK, so by overcoming one and two in the way that you have, number three naturally falls away. Um, I just want to make it clear that I, I'm, un I'm uncomfortable with this proposal um, on the basis of policy. And it sets, in my opinion, sets a dangerous precedent. The reason I'm abstaining, it's self-evident that there are exceptional circumstances here. And I feel very uncomfortable um, putting the applicant in the position that he's in. We are tied by our policy, so we have to be very comfortable that the proposal that has been put does in fact overcome that, um, uh, th th those reasons. Councillor Adam. Thanks, Chairman. Um, just on the subject of isolation, I think what well, I would say that there's more than one sort of way to define that. There's isolation in terms of physically outside in a built up area boundary, but that it could still not be isolated from the community that is clearly in support of the, the application that's before us. So although it isn't within the sort of boundary on the map, there is a more holistic um, way of viewing that, which is slightly, albeit slightly harder to define in terms of um, the records that we may have. But that that's how I would read isolation in, in being that essentially, as, as I think it was the parish council noted, it's um, half a mile to the church sort of thing. I think that, in my mind, overcomes that from my personal point of view of, of how to read isolation uh, just wondering if that might help. Um, also, I was wondering if um, Councillor Mills might consider the points that Councillor Curtis made in regard to AS10 just to strengthen the resolve of his proposal. Councillor Mills, are you happy with that? Would you like to be reminded by Councillor Curtis? Um, policy AS, policy, thank you, Chair. Um, policy AS10, um, community um, small it allows small scale schemes for housing so forth so forth um, to meet a need identified by a local community and I think clearly here we have support for a need that has been identified by the local community thank you chair okay Dale would you like to just briefly go through all that again for us just so that everyone is clear of what's on the table and the reasons for it I would thank you chair um I think probably preface what I'm about to say with uh, a reference back to the, the MPPF where it tells you that you should make decisions in accordance with the uh, development plan unless material circumstances indicate otherwise. And I think members have been indicating that there are material circumstances that they think do indicate otherwise in this instance. So I think I think that's possibly your starting point, although I haven't actually heard you say that today. I think that was the, the, the sense of, of what's been coming from you. Um, and the material circumstances that I think you see are this gentleman's exceptional medical needs and his local connection. Um, what I've also heard is that you feel that he represents a local need in accordance with AS10. Now I have to say that our normal approach to local needs is that they're identified by the parish council or, or some other such body by way of survey uh, and we don't establish local needs on the basis that someone applies and says they have a local need um, but that is obviously your decision to make if you wish. Um, I've also heard you say that you don't feel that the site is isolated from the village um, although it is outside the, any built up any village boundary um, because it is closely related to the village it isn't in your view isolated um, what I have heard very little on is the issue of harm to the listed building and the issue of the the design point that's in in point two I think Councillor Mills said he didn't felt that feel that it interfered with the barn but I've not heard very much more on that, and I think it would be really helpful if you could uh, bolster that for me, uh, and then I think I'd have a complete understanding. I think specifically Councillor Mills, and I think I surmised this for him, said that um, uh, it causes no harm to that listed building. 
Um, is that a fair? Councillor Dixon? I would concur with that view. I thought the sufficient distance between the proposed building and the, uh, the listed barn was sufficient that uh, would be limited harm, if any, as such. But um, Gail has ju uh, just been minded that the housing needs survey report in 2016 did that mention uh, the requirement for this local needs because obviously it's listed there as a material consideration and uh, it was pointed out and i just wondered if briefly while we're looking at the reasons to assist whether or not we could have that uh, slide that uh, councillor fielding produced which was was it the wrcc letter and i just wondered if uh, that's the one if that might assist as well yeah um, Chairman, to help me answer that question, can I uh, ask Paul whether he has any insights uh, that I don't have? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the quick answer to all of these questions is that the the dwelling does um, meet an identified local need that would that's been identified in the normal way. the The sole issue is the location in that it's not within or adjacent to the village that's that's the only respect in which it doesn't meet meet the self-build or local needs policies thank you for that help paul be happy with that Jim. i'm trying to get it straight in my mind you talked about material circumstances at the start which i'm glad you included because that very much specifically makes this about this site and this application so it doesn't set a precedent those material circumstances, am I right in thinking those material, material circumstances can overcome the fact that one might consider this to be uh, an isolated dwelling? A simple yes or no would be good. Then you can have yes. That helps me greatly. OK, we have a proposal. It has been seconded by Councillor Foreman for the reasons given. Um, could we please have a show of hands for those in conditions favor? conditions in section 106 first, I think. Thank you, Ross. <laughs> Could we have some conditions? Usual conditions. I have nothing prepared, Chair. The usual conditions. Um, Any additional the, the question is, do members wish a section 106 obligation? And if so, in what sense and what form? In what way do they want to limit the occupancy of the dwelling? Um, well, local, I, I, local need? As I, that? as I understand it, we would need to do that through the self build and local need anyway. Yeah, the, the so that would be required. I recall offered um, agricultural need as well. Um, bum, bum, bum. Trying to find it in my notes, but I'm sure he mentioned agricultural need. I'm looking at Andy Wilkins. What, while you're looking at that, Councillor Adams, see signals, whether he's so ask him to come in now. Uh, no, did I miss, just miss that? Hang, okay. hang on, I, I'll, I'll get. Councillor Adam had something, I think. Just um, to maybe try and allay some of the concerns over the heritage of the of the barn, would landscaping be I think a useful would, one? The landscaping would be on the um, uh, conditions anyway. But would maybe a more specific one in terms of, I, I just wasn't sure whether that was something that we might want a closer look on just for to, to sort of satisfy that particular thing, or whether if it's just covered by usual ones, then that might be fine. If there's something specific you want on the fact that we've said um, we the that the proposal is that there is no harm identified, I don't think it's necessary unless you have anything specific. But a landscaping in, in um, that case, no addition will almost certainly be on that. Um, the 106 will cover um, the uh, self build and um, uh, occupancy and, and local need. So I'm comfortable with that. Councillor Kendall. Thank you, Chair. Just very quickly to confirm, would that could we remove permitted development rights on this as well, or would that automatically be removed because of the section? Oh, look, so uh, we, we'd have to have a reason to withdraw permitted development rights, Chairman. I can't currently see a reason to withdraw them. Uh, do members see one? I don't. Only that I'd want to see it preserved as it, I don't know. I, I would prefer to see it gone, but OK, if there's no other reason. So it's can't think of what harm it would cause. It's extending the building further. I don't, I don't the harm's think... been done. <laughs> well, OK. It's, yeah. OK, are we happy we've got the 106 and the conditions done? Ross, I think we're happy, aren't we? Something coming through from Paul looking looking at this. I'm, I'm happy that with the 106, yeah, yeah to yes. secure local connection and self-build. 
Paul has suggested, Ross, that um, as it's contrary to policy, but permitted on personal circumstances, that would be justify removing permitted development rights. How do you feel about that? Well, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I think it should. I think yeah. we should remove them. Um, it, it, my, my views it, can it change. Preserve this in aspect as it is, and then anything further would be changes with a separate application. That's what I'm saying. I think what we're seeing before us is acceptable yeah. for all the reasons that have been stated. But I wouldn't want to see lots of small incremental changes allowed on the method. I'm prepared to support that. I'm prepared to support that. Right. Um, so Ross, yeah, you have a view. I just think your your consideration about removal of PD rights should be for reasons of impact on the setting and the listed building, really, um, rather than any question of personal circumstances. It's you know, is it is there a justification to remove PD rights for those reasons? Yes, I, I, would say, sorry, can I, I think I think I think I'd say yes, given exactly what we've just been saying about the um, listed building. Any further, whatever the permitted development was hypothetically to come forward, a porch or whatever, I think that would change the nature of that building that we're, we're looking at. And that could negatively impact the listed building. I agree with you on that. That's exactly what I was about to say. So yes, on that basis, removal of PD. So, sorry, but to clarify that, that would be extensions and porches. Any enlargement of the building? Extensions Any change to the, to the building, yes. Yeah. Anything that physically changes. Not the say building. new windows. Yeah, I, yes, I'm, exactly. Any, any changes, I think. Any changes? Yes, any changes. Okay. Any yeah. changes? Okay. I think, I think we're there. You're all happy now. Um, you've got what you need. Correct, Dan? Okay, in that case, we can now move to a vote. Could I please have a show of hands for all those in favour of granting permission for the reasons given with the conditions given and the 106? Unanimous. Oh, no, it's sorry, not. no, it's not. Seven, four. And for those against, and abstentions. One. One. In that case, Council therefore resolves to grant application 2101669 one at Tree Barn for the reasons that have been set out. Fantastic. Right, let's move to our final item for the evening, which is application 2102472FUL and uh, at the same time 2102473LBC, which is the cottage on the green in Warmington. Our presenting officer is once again Paul Thompson. Paul, whenever you're ready, over to you. Thanks again, Chair. Uh, we're staying in Warmington. Uh, we're going to go a little closer into the village this time, uh, to the green in fact. This is a Grade 2 listed cottage, uh, one of a, a row. Um, proposed is a rear extension. There are also some uh, alterations to the uh, fenestration and uh, on the front elevation, but the case officer um, doesn't object to those. However, the extension at the rear which looks like this existing elevations at the top and proposed at the bottom um if we compare elevation three with the northwest elevation that's your easiest indicator of of the the scale of the extension um here's what it looks like currently uh, it's a small sort of glass lean that will be demolished as part of the proposal which will extend above the eaves line and obscure this uh, ground floor window to the right. Uh, that's looking at it towards the neighbour's property. Um, the extension, if you recall the, the site plan, will extend further rearwards than this. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's another view. That's um, on the strength of the, uh, the, the scale and the design and the fenestration of the extension, the case officer recommends that we refuse uh, planning permission and listed building consent due to the harm to the listed building chair. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, we will call forward our first speaker on this item, who is uh, Miss Jilly Keith. Is that right? Marvellous. Come on forward, come on, if you want to sit in the middle. Um, I don't know how the microphones have ended up in the places they have. It, okay. <laughs> Councillor Fielding, make a mess of my room. Um, do you want to grab the microphone to your uh, left and bring it onto your desk? 
it has been cleaned. I did get it, see it getting cleaned earlier on. Um, now, you'll have three minutes, and I'll give you a 30-second warning. If you stay seated for questions afterwards, please do. Um, whenever you're comfortable, set, and ready to go, if you press the button in the middle, it will turn red, and as soon as you start speaking, I will start the timer. Okay, so over to you, whenever you're comfortable. Button in the middle. It'll go red. Yeah, yes. you're on, so whenever you're ready. Um, I sold my house in Scotland and moved down to Warwickshire to be closer to my three children. They love to visit me in Warmington, but as the property only has two bedrooms, it is very difficult to have family get togethers. Therefore, I was hoping to add a small bedroom and replace the leaking conservatory as part of minor planning of space downstairs. I'm keen to maintain the ethos of this unspoilt village and the character of the cottage and feel my plans to extend are practical and sympathetic. The conservation officer raised various concerns about the proposals. He is concerned about the scale of the extension, yet I feel it is modest and the proportionate to the size of the cottage. It replaces a single story conservatory in the same location. Neighbouring properties show examples of much larger additions with rear elevations, including a variety of projections into their rear gardens. The new extension has a much lower ridge height than the cottage and will therefore be read as subservient. The conservation officer refers to the rear of the property being mostly intact and that it can be appreciated despite the addition of the conservatory. The new extension is a simple vernacular form and will only result in one additional opening giving access at first floor level. The stonework at the back will be exposed within the extension showing the original openings and historic changes allowing the original design and form to be appreciated. Internalising the kitchen window is raised as a concern. This window has already been moved in the past and patched with rather incongruous red brick. That's the first photograph. He mentioned that the level of the first floor window accentuates the scale of the extension. This can easily be addressed by lowering it to echo existing windows. He goes on to say that the large ground floor aperture is also of concern, even though it provides a view of the rear wall from the garden, a feature of the existing conservatory that the conservation officer supports. The small conservation roof lights do not detract from the roofscape and are evident in many historic building improvements providing natural light in the building, reducing the need for artificial light. There are many such roof lights evident around the village. To summarise, my aims to sensitively extend are... 30 seconds. To provide space for my family to be together, to maintain the character while bringing the cottage in line with contemporary living. The picturesque front overlooking the iconic green will remain unaltered, apart from the double glazed windows made from wood to match the originals. Um, I'm going to skip on it. The cottage has been altered through time. The front door has been moved according to old photographs. Photograph two shows the old position of the front door. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up if you don't mind, please. OK. Um, historical and cultural heritage are very important, but should be sensitively weighed against the issues impacting our environment. Where possible, changes should be made to reduce these adverse effects caused by in inefficient heating and poor insulation. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Members, do we have any questions from Keith, please? Councillor Mills? Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you did say in your presentation that other um, properties along there have been extended? Yes. Uh, would that be immediate to your on both so, sides from my rear garden, you can see extensions. They have extended, um, so that, that they are not the original. No. no. OK, thank you. I think the property to the right is not listed, but the property to the left is. If looking uh, from the green. Okay. OK, OK, we've had an answer to that question. Does anyone else have any other questions they would like to make? No, Ms Keith, thank you very much for your patience and your time this evening. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind giving the desk and the microphone a quick wipe down with the uh, Sorry. with the WhatsApp, there we go. And if you can press the button in the middle, it'll turn it off again. Oh. Marvellous. Thank you very much. And while you're doing that, I think uh, Councillor Fielding is all set, ready to go. So just bear with us, Councillor Fielding. When Ms Keith uh, exits the chair, you can then come forward.
As a feeling, do please make your way forward. And once again, when you're plugged in and on charge, um, you'll have five minutes, 30 second warning. Stay seated for questions afterwards. Otherwise, when you're ready, do feel free to start. Could the officer put up the picture, photograph of the rear of the building, please? Paul, would you mind bringing up the photo of the rear of the building, please? Thank you very much. Right. The cottage on the green. Uh, and Councillor Ferdinand, do you want to take your mask off? And my hearing aids. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. Don't get flustered. You take as much time as you need. It's a curse of curse of old age. Um, right. The cottage on the green was two small cottages that had been amalgamated into one dwelling. I suspect the, or the original house had a thatch roof. The proposal is to bring the property up to the 21st century, and it is yet another alteration to this property. In the architect's report, he refers to the fact that the timber, the timbers will not be affected. The conservatory at the rear is a typical block botched structure that leaks both rainwater into the property and heat out. I go along with the planning officer's design uh, um, and statement as on page 63. Um, as a result, she says that I find the proposal to accord with policies CS9 and 20 of the core strategy and is in keeping with the local an acceptable form of the development location. In, con in constructing the extension, the applicant has observed the properties on either side, both of which have this typical structure. The applicant needs another bedroom and the proposal provides this together with improving the accommodation on the ground floor, which will do away with this unsightly conservatory. CS uh, Stratford require properties to be brought up to the current insulation standards to preserve and improve their carbon footprint. Adopting CSA to the core strategy states that it will be will be given to protect and enhance the wide range of historical and cultural assets that contribute to the character and identity of the district. Proposals which could lead to substantial harm or less of, of the significance of the design asset will only be permitted where the public benefits outweigh the harm. CS8 does not state heritage decisions are taken in the best interest of the heritage asset and not in the best interest of any current owner. Whilst this has implications in recent decisions by the conservation officer, where he, where he has refused to allow heritage assets to be affected in any way, shape or form, this completely reverses the planning policy that is not stated anywhere by SDC, and one could argue it goes against CS1 sustainable development. In addition, the, in the decision being taken in the interest of heritage assets, this is extremely concerning given CS2 and SDC's commitment to do all it can to mitigate climate change. Therefore, this is in direct contradiction to the CS policies and its stated commitments. For me, the whole, the sole problem centers around how SDC in, interprets public benefit and how it weighs up against less than substantial harm. As CS8 states, where a development proposal will lead to less than substantial harm to, to the significance of a designed heritage asset, this harm can be justified, weighed against the public benefit of the proposal, including securing optimum viable use. The submitted heritage statement, which the conservation has chosen to ignore, is not mentioned in the committee report that, that states neither the extension or the alteration will cause significant harm to the listed cottage or its setting. We will need, we will feel it, we feel it preserves the character and the visual appearance of existing buildings and the site. Also including is a heritage statement which sets out quite clearly the degree of less than significant harm is minimal and is largely reversible. 
On this basis, when the minimal harm is weighed against the public benefit of climate change and steps of sustainable construction, as specified in the com committee report, together with most of the working re being reversible, the conclusion should be the application is granted. Uh, I rest my case. Councillor Fielding, thank you very much. Members, do we have any questions for Councillor Fielding? No? Case rested. Thank you very much, Councillor Fielding. Uh, if you could kind of clean indeed. up after yourself, that'd be great. OK, members, do we have any questions for officers? Points of clarification, please. Councillor Mills. Thanks, Mr Chair. Um, Paul, can the, the photograph, if you could show me the again at the back of the conservatory, sort of side on. No? That's it. Um, how much further into the garden will the new um, development be? Extension, well done, thanks. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word, it's getting late. Um, well, we can measure it precisely. I don't have the figure to hand, um, but this, this drawing gives you something of an idea and possibly uh, this one as well. If you compare where the rear elevation is there and the rear elevation there, you can see it comes almost to halfway along that building uh, compared to no more than about a fifth, a quarter or a fifth. Um, if, you, if you'd like to bear with me, I can give you a precise figure. Please. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're having much joy there, Paul. <laughs> I'll take that as bear with me. <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies and gents. Uh, about 1.4 metres further along. OK, happy Councillor Mills. Councillor Curtis, please. Thank you, Chair. And um, Paul, really just following on from Councillor Mills sort of point in another way, um, if we look at this plan that we've got up the 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 block of gray that is to the sort of towards the top of the screen um yes that one uh, the, the next one sorry yes that one to the top next one up that's it thank you that is is that the two story extension of the adjoining property so if on yes there yeah that, that's correct council yeah it's, it's that, that structure there so i think from what you said the proposed new extension at the back of the that we're looking at this evening would not extend as far as the existing extension on the adjoining property would that be correct that's my reading of the plans, Councillor. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Dixon, please. 
Thank you, Chairman. Paul, can you put up the slide, please, which showed the position of the various listed buildings? Particularly, I was wondering if the one that we've just referred to is a listed building as well. It's not. That's this. That's this building here. OK, any further questions, points of clarification? Councillor Adam? Were your, was your microphone on then? No. Turns out uh, Councillor Adams' microphone didn't respond to his press, so he'll ask his question again. Sorry about that. Um, the building on the other side that appears to be attached to the applicant's um, property, um, it looks, yeah, that one, it, on the plan, it looks like that sort of has an L shape as well that kicks back. Is is that a two-storey building? I, know, I noticed that's listed as well but i'm trying to gather a sort of sense of the form of the the building that's attached to it it's a good question and one i'm afraid i don't have the answer to as as, as it wasn't the case officer and I, I didn't have any uh photos in that direction i can have a quick hunt and see if there were any uh again i'm gonna have to prevail on your patience Can you see that on screen? Uh, we 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 can. Right, that's that two-story structure there then. So. Okay, so unless we have any other questions or of clarification for our officers, we'll move into the debate. Do we have any more questions? Last chance. No, let's move into the debate. Who would like to kick us off? Start picking on people. Councillor Mills, are you going? Oh, Councillor Mills a again. Oh dear, oh dear. Thank, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have to say that the Conservative back does look pretty darn tatty. Um, and I believe this uh, new extension would, would improve that. And I'm just looking at the um, officer's report um, about the landscape impact on AONB. Um, he's saying there'd be no harmful impact on the character of AONB. Um, and he also says on this on page 63, I consider the proposed development is in keeping with the lo locality, an acceptable form of development in this location. So, um, I, as you know, I always go and look at these properties. Um, it, it can't be seen. I mean, from, obviously from from the green, you can't, you won't be able to see it. Um, and I don't feel there's any harm done, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and, and I do think it'd be an improvement was there. Thank you. Is that a proposal? Oh gosh, I'll go, okay, I'll go for that. Yeah, Probably. I'll come back to you for your reasons in a second. Thank you. Councillor Curtis. For the reasons Councillor Mills has outlined, I'd be happy to second that proposal if we can come back. Anyone else like to speak? I'm not minded to support it. I'm, I'm minded to support the case officer. Uh, whilst I have sympathy in that uh, the existing extension is clearly tatty and run down and in need of replacing. I believe that this is a demonstrably larger extension um, and would form a substantial block of built form in that area. Um, so I, I am in agreement with the case officer in this particular instance, but that is a personal view. Councillor Kendall. Yeah, I think I'd just echo what you've said. I'm not against the principle of some sort of development here, but I think what is being proposed for us is too big. And for that, and that's exactly what you've said for me. So uh, some element of, I don't know, single story or something like that, I could be more open to this. It's, it's a very big development. and It does change the character of that listed building considerably. Thank you very much, Ken Scandal. I'm, I'm I, on that basis. I'm going to propose that we do um, refuse for the reasons that have been given. Um, are you willing I'll to second? second now, of course, we have had a proposal uh, that has been seconded to grants. So we must hear that one first. Before we do that, would anyone else like to speak? Councillor Jennings first.
Paul, would you mind bringing that photo up that shows the? Correct. It shows the um, the neighbour to the right when you're looking at the rear of the property, please. Yeah, other side. Sorry, bear with me. You caught, caught me unprepared because the mic Sorry, was on. that's right. Sorry, yes, you. it was the, the very last photo you brought up and it was of, that's it. That's, and that's a listed building as well. And that's obviously an extension which has been put on there. Okay, okay. thank you. you. Anything further to add? Wait, uh, hang. Yeah, sorry, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Jennings, do you have anything else you want to add before I move to Councillor Dixon? No. Councillor Dixon? Chair, Chair, before you go on. No. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, given that we've obviously got two members here who are concerned regarding the extents of the proposed extension, do we, Paul, have a floor plan? Because obviously, uh, if uh, we think it's too large, could we actually not be kind of could the applicant in future put something forward which would meet their needs but not be quite so uh, the, the, in extent in volume anyone so, can put anything they want in as an application absolutely but do we um, know, whether we grant it or not is another question indeed i was wondering how how what's the floor plan that's so much bigger here we have a proposal to refuse uh, sorry to grant oh, forgive me that has been seconded. Can you clarify for me the reasons that you uh, would go against the officer's recommendation? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I feel that there isn't any harm uh, to the um, locality, as as what the um, officer says in his statement. Uh, is it? He says in keeping with the locality, um, in accordance with policy CS9. Um, and says the proposed development will be classed as small scale and therefore satisfy there be no harmful impact on the character of AOMB. So, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll um, say it, it has no harm as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Um, Ultimately, in your opinion, it has no harm and yeah, the size yeah, is of an appropriate yeah. uh, size. Um, I would stress that, uh, uh, the, the, as you've pointed out, it is harm to AMMB is what you're referring to rather than a listed building. Uh, but um, I understand that you are putting that there is no harm um, and the size and scale is appropriate. Councillor Curtis, is there anything else you want to add? I think we've got enough. Um, but no, I no, I think no, given fine. the context of the other buildings. OK, let's move then to a vote. So the proposal is to now we have to take these independently. Um, I believe so. Uh, the first, this is a proposal on application 2102472FUL. Uh, it proposes a grant for the reasons given. Um, usual conditions. Nothing else you want to add? Can I have a show of hands for those in favour of granting, please? Three. Three. Those against? One, two, three. three. Those abstaining? Two. Two. I get the casting vote. I will maintain that I will not be supporting your grant. So, we have also, a, I'm going to assume that that will be the same result for the LBC. Do I need to go through the LBC as well? I think so, yes. Okay, we'll do the same for the LBC. So, could I have a show of hands for those in favour of granting the LBC for the reasons given? Those against? Three. And abstentions? Two, three. Three. Did you some. vote? Who are we missing? Four. Okay, that was the LBC. We can. This is for the listed building consents. We've done the full application. This is for the LBC. So 2102473 LBC. The proposal, the proposal is to grant for the reasons that you guys set out. Could we have a show of hands in favour of granting the LBC? There we go. Three. Those against? Three. Abstentions? Two. Two. Once again, I'll use my casting vote to overturn that. So we have a CAS proposal, which is to refuse the application for the reasons listed in the report. Could I please, this is for the full application, 2102472FUL. Could I have a show of hands for those in favour of refusal, please? Three. Three. Those against? Three. Three. Those abstentions? Two. Two. Casting vote? Refuse. 2102473LBC. To refuse for the reasons given in the report, could I have a show of hands for refusal? It's three. And those against refusal? Three. Abstentions? Two, casting votes, refuse. So 
Committee has therefore resolved to refuse applications 2102472FUL and 2102473LBC for the reasons given. Members, that is our final application of the evening. I don't believe there is any urgent business. There is not. Um, it is our last uh, planning committee for the year. So thank you all members for your time and commitment throughout the year. Thank you to all our officers as well for their time, help and commitment throughout the year. Um, and of course, all of our speakers. It leaves me to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We will see you in 2022. Thank you very much. Meeting closed. Thank you.